Hi again, Star Trek modelers. Boyd here with you, and welcome back to the channel. Well, here's what's going to be our next build series here at Trekworks, and you can see this is the Star Trek The Next Generation Vorcha class Klingon cruiser. Uh, this kit is around 13 inches long or so when it's all built up, and the AMT Ertl catalog number for this is uh, number 6812. It's not listed anywhere on the box, but uh, this is 11400 scale. I checked that out and looked it up on the web. Uh, you don't see very many of these built, but I think it's a pretty cool model. I'm going to have some fun putting this one together. We're going to do lighting and everything on it, of course, and I'm just doing some research right now on uh, the paint scheme and everything that uh, references that I can find on the internet. And uh, let's have a look underneath of the lid here and see how this thing looks. And this kit was released uh, in the mid 90s or so, so it's starting to get a little bit old. You can see that the, the uh, instruction sheet here is starting to yellow just a little bit, but. Um, fairly big instruction sheet. You've got a little bit of information there on the front page about the ship. Uh, it mentions that uh, they actually call it the Kvork class, which is incorrect. Uh, this is the uh, Vorcha class ship. But uh, it mentions that the ship's bridge is located in an eleva elevated module just aft of the separation line and that the uh, there's a forward disruptor cannon module that can also be replaced with other types of hardware for other mission types. And supposedly the uh, cannon can be injected in case they need extra speed or something like that, so that's interesting. But um, Here you can see the uh, basic assembly instructions. This model doesn't have a very high parts count, so uh, we're looking at a really easy assembly here, but it's going to get a little bit more complicated when we do our lighting. Now the one thing that's nice about this kit is that it does include some really nice clear uh, red parts to do the lighting, and uh, we're going to have to get creative as far as doing all the window work on it and kind of find out where that's all supposed to be located and everything, do a little research and we'll figure that out, but you can see the assembly is pretty straightforward here. Then in this section here they've got a nice uh, su uh, paint suggestion and decal location guide here, so, um, but again we're going to do a little research to find out what uh, colors this should be and uh, whether how much it needs any weathering or uh, how it should look overall, so we'll figure that out and go from there. Let's start having a look at the parts here. You can see these two parts here are the uh, main hull assembly and there's some fairly good scribing detail on here, uh, really really uh, nice and clean. I don't see a lot of flash molding on this. The uh, parts are fairly sturdy. So you have that and you have the uh, nice Klingon uh, insignia here for the base and a basic neck that goes onto that for the mounting. We probably won't use that. Uh, but uh, here we can see the, uh, the uh, decal sheet which is very very basic. A couple of markings here and there and that's about it. Um, so apparently this ship didn't have a whole lot of markings on it, either that or there might be some aftermarket decals out there from JT Graphics or somebody, and I'll check into that. Here you can see the engine assemblies, uh, pretty straightforward here too. Uh, nice detail on them though, and you can see that uh, they have the uh, cutouts in place for the clear red parts that go in place here and there. We have part of the bridge assembly here, the elevated bridge. Uh, here we have the forward uh, disruptor uh, cannon assembly some other engine detail parts and things like that. Here we have the main uh, engine ports here at the rear, which looks like we're going to have to cut some out and do our tinting again like we did on the Katinga build, but no problem there. Looks like there's some embossed areas here where there's some lighting, uh, so they kind of give you a little bit of a guide where some of the light's supposed to go, so that's pretty good. And uh, just basic detail parts here and there, nothing really special. Just uh, try to get you guys a nice shot of the, some of the detail on that. You can see there's some nice panels and things on there, so that'll show up when we do some uh, shading and maybe a wash type paint job on this. And uh, here we have the uh, red clear insert parts. So uh, this is really nice for lighting. It looks like everything's still on the tree and everything. We're not missing anything, so that's good. A couple of loose parts in here, just some small detail things. But uh, blue printer, I don't even know if they exist anymore. But uh, so this is pretty straightforward and pretty basic, guys. Not a lot to report on this. Uh, it'll build out to a nice size, like I said, around 13 inches or so in length. Uh, but it's got enough uh, detail on it where when we light it and everything, it should be a pretty nice looking model. So this is going to be our next build on the uh, channel here, guys. I hope you'll check it out. And uh, we're going to be working on this one simultaneously and doing uh, Robert's uh, TOS 350 Enterprise from Polar Lights. And I'll just be giving you uh, updates on that from time to time so Robert can see how the progress is going. And uh, This time Robert's going with the uh, round two uh, spinning Bassard lighting kit on that, so a little different than John's buildup was, where we use the tenant control setup. But 
this is going to be a lot of fun to work on this kit too. Like I said, I've never built one of these before and I'm looking forward to it. So, all right, guys, well, that's a wrap. We'll be back here or, uh, probably starting towards the weekend here and get started on this kit and uh, start cranking on the uh, TOS Enterprise as well. So we'll see you then, guys. Take care and happy modeling.